How often should my child be practicing? <laughs> the eternal question for band directors. Hi, I'm Dave Errington. I'm the band director here at Suffer Middle School. Uh, and that's a question I get asked an awful lot at parents' night or just when I see people out in the real world, so to speak. How often should I hear my child practicing? Now, the glib band director answer to that, of course, is as much as humanly possible. They should be practicing four or five hours a day. No, that's not realistic. I know that. I have been there. I understand. I've been through it. It's not possible to get your kids to do three or four hours a day. The, the realistic answer is a little bit every day. Okay, consistent practice, consistently small amounts of practice on a regular basis will do a lot more for your playing ability and your musical progress in general than a lot of practicing all at once. So for instance, what I tell the kids is uh, the number of days you practice is a lot more important than the number of minutes you practice. What I mean by that is if you practice 10 minutes a day for seven days a week, that's going to be a lot better than, say, doing 70 minutes a day one day a week, even though it's exactly the same amount of time. Uh, our brains and our lips and our muscles in general learn a lot better with consistent practice than they do with just sporadic practice. So what you want to do is you want to practice a small amount of time more consistently uh, and put it together. What I shoot for in the sixth grade is I say 20 minutes a day six times a week is really good. Okay, If you do 20 minutes a day six times a week, I can absolutely guarantee you're going to get an A or an A plus in my class. That's the way it works. Okay. Um, I don't have the kids keep track of their practice time. That's not what we do. But I can definitely see the progress and that kind of thing. And, you know, 20 minutes a day, six, six or seven days a week will definitely do that. Six days is fine. You can do some time off. And if you miss a day, of course, you can make up for it by doing extra on another day. But you shouldn't, on a consistent basis, you know, practice just like one or two days a week. That's probably not going to be enough to keep track of. Um, we don't think about these things, I know, and these things also as muscles. But they really are. And they need consistent practice to be able to really work to them. Um, I do have six practice rules at school that I go over with the kids that are, I kind of explain throughout various points of the year. Warm up by playing long notes. If you don't hear anything else at home, you should hear your child playing long, sometimes annoying, long notes on their instrument. Long tones, we call them. Uh, long tones are like lifting weights for your lips. They really do help you get in tune and uh, consistently produce a good sound. That's what we want. Um, the most basic thing on your instrument is how well you sound, of course. Nobody cares if you can play Flight of the Bumblebee at 600 miles an hour if you sound like a pregnant hippo. That's not going to be the way it works. Um, for the equivalent for drummers is, of course, doing stick exercises, uh, rudiments, stick control, things like that. Uh, that's number one. Number two, always, always, always check your key signature. So make sure you're playing the right notes before you play the song. If you learn something wrong with the wrong notes in it, it's a hundred times harder to unlearn it and then relearn it in the right key. Do it right the first time. Do it slow. Do it steady. Do it right the first time. That's the best way to go. Uh, number three, think it first. This is a my, my simplistic way of saying uh, audiation. Audiation is the fancy musical term, musical scientific term, for hearing sound in your head that doesn't actually exist. So if I asked you to sing happy birthday to you in your head, you could go, you could hear that song in your head. Um, just like you can visualize, say, the front door of your bedroom at home. Okay, you can get a picture of that in your head without actually seeing it. You can audiate any song. Uh, that's what Think at First is all about, number three. Number four, practicing, practicing is not once, practicing is a whole bunch of times. You don't practice it until you get it right. You practice it until you can't possibly get it wrong anymore. Think about tying your shoes. I mean, when you first tied your shoes, of course, you had to do it a, you know, a dozen times a day to get it really good. Now you don't even think about tying your shoes. It's so easy. You've done it 10,000 times. That's where you want to get to with your various musical skills, you know, whether it be a scale or a slur or an articulation or, or whatever like that. If you get to the point where you don't have to think about it, then you can worry about doing the cool stuff, the artistic stuff, you know, and make it sound really cool. You don't have to worry about how do I play this on my instrument. Uh, number five, practice small to big. That means basically take little chunks of the song and then expand out as you get better at it. Uh, number six, mess with it. You can change things around. If it's hard, make it simple. If it's fast, make it slow. If it's slow, make it fast. Uh, you can do the articulations backwards. You can play it in a different key. You know, you can do various things to make it fun to play and to kind of mess around with it. And I find that that's a really good way to do it. If it's a straight song, swing it. You know, you can swing any song in the world. Mary had da 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 the magic word is persistent. So those are the practice rules. I mean, this is obviously a really uh, condensed version of what I do with the kids. Uh, but again, the, the short answer really to how often should I, my child be practicing at home is uh, a small amount on a consistent basis is a lot better than a large amount on an inconsistent basis. So you want to be doing, you know, even if it's 10 minutes a day, six days a week, that's going to be a lot better than trying to do an hour all at once on Sunday afternoon right before the quiz on Monday morning, you know, that kind of thing. 
Uh, you can't cram muscles. It doesn't work that way. You can cram maybe a little bit with brain. It doesn't really do you any good and it doesn't help really too much, but you can kind of get through the test. That's not really true with muscles. You can't put 5,000 pounds on a weight stack and once lift it up and then all of a sudden you'll be able to you know, lift 5,000 pounds all the time. It doesn't work like that. Our bodies don't work like that. Um, if you have any questions, uh, D. Yarrington at Ramapo, oops, sorry, D. Yarrington at sufferncentral.org. They changed it again last year and I'm not quite up to speed. Um, and I think that's about it for now. Thanks. Bye.